Protect you deep. And an email come across asking how useful spotting scopes and scopes and red dot sights and stuff like that, how useful they actually are in the paintball world. The, the first thing you have to think about when you're trying to pick a scope or, or something like that is that for the most part, you know, the spotting scopes and stuff like that at first sound like a really good idea, okay? You can get there, you know, you can take the spotting scope, you can scan the, uh, the foilage before you make a move. Um, you know, the same thing with a regular scope, maybe it'll help you line up your shot a little bit better. But here's what uh, one of the biggest problems when trying to use a scope or use a spotting scope when you're in the woods. And I'm going to tell you this because I want to try to save you some money because I've made this mistake before. I've bought spotting scopes and stuff like that. I take them out into the woods and all of a sudden I realize, okay, this doesn't work for a very obvious reason. The spotting scopes, like this, this is a spotting scope. I bought this on eBay for the show. I think it was like 15 bucks. Um, it's a 10 by 40 spotting scope. You know, and it's got the adjustable, you know, it's got the adjustable, um, uh, you know, you, you can adjust it in, adjust the focus and everything like that. It works great. Great little spotting scope. But here's the problem. This spotting scope is designed to be pressed up against the eye uh, when you're looking, okay? So when you're out there, you know, in your backyard and you have it pressed up against the eye, it works great. You've got a great field of vision and, and you know, you can see everything perfectly. But here's what happens. As you pull the spotting scope further away from your eye, the little, the, 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 the focal point that's inside here gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So when I put it up to my eye, I see everything. If I go an inch away from my face, it's like I'm trying to, you know, stare through a, a pee hole. It's tiny. I mean, it's like that big, you know? So, you know, you go from this being nice big view, pull it an inch away from your face, and it's like trying to stare through a, a coffee straw. The reason why that's important is when you have your mask on, there's only so close to your eye that you can get this thing to go, okay? You can't get it any closer to your, your face than your lens, okay? And in many cases, the lenses are gonna distance the scope at least, at a minimum, at least, probably an inch, maybe further away from your eye. The, 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 most of the lenses that are on the market, they bubble out, you know, they bubble out left to right, they bubble out top to bottom. So that's a, that can be a, a very expensive mistake when you're trying to select a, when you're trying to select the spotting scope. It looks great in the store like this, but when you're actually out in the woods, you, it's more like you're trying to look at it from here. So if you really want to see how it's going to perform, what you probably want to do is you probably want to take your finger, stick it, you know, next to your, to your eye like this, then put the scope up to your, to your finger. And that's going to tell you really truly what you're going to be looking at when you're out there on the field trying to use a scope or a spotting scope with some sort of magnification. So the, the thing that they need if they were going to actually design something for paintball is they would need something like this. This is one of those super wide range door peepholes. I actually took this off the front so my door right now has a hole in it right out to the outside. Jen's already yelling at me because bugs are coming into the house. But you would need something like this with a huge aperture. This way, you know, you can just basically, if you had it tied around your neck, you can lift it up really quick, you get about five times magnification, you can look around and put it back in your jersey and go on and play. Unfortunately, I haven't seen uh, too many of these on the market. Now, this doesn't work, okay? This is, I'm just using this uh, for you to look at how big that aperture is because that's realistically what you would need being that this is that far away from your eyes. So. That's the problem with trying to use scopes on paintball guns. It looks like a good idea when you don't have your mask on, but when you actually put your mask on and you try to put it up against your eye, you realize that you can't snug your eye into the socket like you should, and it's actually about an inch, inch and a half away from your eye, and the, the hole or the, uh, uh, the focal point becomes very, very small. You can't see anything. The magnification is jumping around all over the place, and at that point, you're already out. So that rules out anything with really any sort of magnification when you're out there on the field. Binoculars are the same thing. Take your pair of binoculars, put them up against your eyes. You can see everything great. Now take them and move them two inches away from your eyes. It's like trying to, you know, trying to stare through a coffee straw. It just doesn't work out. Um, so that I want to make sure that I put that out there before you invest the money in buying a scope or buying a spotting scope or buying binoculars for the woods. And then when you get out there, it's like, but 
but but okay i can't see anything and then you know now you just dragged out 50 dollars pair of binoculars and they get shot and broken and everybody's pissed so that's the first thing now let's talk about red dot scopes red dot scopes actually work pretty well in the woods okay um you're not going to get laser accuracy uh, with a red dot scope, okay, it's going to help you left to right. It's not going to so much help you up and down. Um, you know, it, it's going to give you a a you know a nice little ballpark of where your round is going to go. But for the most part, it's not going to give you that perfect, uh, consistent drop in the bucket accuracy that you're going to expect. The reason why is because the paintball arc. You know, it's not like a bullet that comes out straight and then starts to drop. Most of the time we have our guns arced up when we're out there in the woods. So depending on how high you arc the, the paintball gun is depending on where it's going to hit and depending on where you side it in, you may have to arc up a little bit more, arc down a little bit more, but it will give you a little bit of a head start um, on the left to right. Okay, most of the time the paintballs will go relatively straight left to right. It's just the up and down, the elevation adjustment is what you're going to have to practice with. Personally, I don't use red dots. Um, the last time I think I used a red dot was like a die eyes on. I had it on my pump gun many, many years ago as a fiber optic red dot. Yeah, I never really looked at it, but as you're trying to figure out where exactly the red dot is when you're out there playing, and when you're trying to find it, at that point, <laughs> the other team's already found you, and as you're trying to sight this thing, you've already got 50 paintballs already in the air coming at you. So. You know, unless you're trying to do kind of a sniper, a uh, sneak up on somebody kind of thing, you might be able to get a little bit of a head start. But honestly, I, you know, I, I'm just as accurate without one as I am with one. The only thing is, is when I'm with one, it can make a difference. What if, what if my gun is tilted to the side? What if my gun's tilted the other way? What if my gun is higher? What if my gun is lower? You know, you have to, um, it makes it harder and harder for you to be able to go and find that little dot, then squeeze off your shot. Kind of a pain in the ass. And something else, most of the time red dots aren't very cheap. Um, I think you can get the cheapest daisy red dot, I think runs maybe $20, $25. And for the most part, uh, you know, once they get hit, that's it. So it's basically a 40, 50 bucks. You might be able to use them for a couple weekends, but the minute that thing gets hit, that's it. Um, so it's, it's kind of an expensive way to, to um, you know, it's kind of an expensive uh, gadget to put on your gun that's basically gonna be disposable because after it gets hit a couple times, it's not really gonna work anymore, which has happened to a bunch of mine. So personally, in my opinion, I would say save your money. Save your money when it comes to scopes and spotter scopes and, and red dot sites and stuff like that. Where can you invest your money? One, getting a nice barrel, making sure you're shooting quality paint, make sure that your gun is maintained, the inside of your gun is spotless, make sure that you're selecting the right lens for the woods. I did a lens selection show a little while ago. You know, make sure you're selecting the right lens for the woods. Make sure that your lens is not scratched and perfectly clear. Scratches on your lens can affect uh, how easy it is to pick stuff out. So those things I found have worked a lot better for me than any of these little gadgets and scopes and stuff like that will. A clean mask, and a clean gun is gonna do much better against somebody with a dirty mask, a dirty gun, and a $200 scope on it. So hopefully this helps you save some money. Thanks for tuning in.